Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to discuss and try and uh, show a way of dealing with data where your baseline, in other words your neutral point, is moving during the course of an experiment. The data we're going to use for this demonstration is some data from a uh, postgraduate student practical where the students have investigated the effect of increasing current on the twitch force developed in a muscle. You can see here we have two channels of lab chart on the screen. The top channel, the red channel here, indicates the twitch stimulus, which is a 10 volt stimulus. And underneath you can see the current which is applied to that stimulus and it's resulting in a twitch. And the twitch is measured in newtons of force um, taken from a force transducer and the voltage signal has been calibrated uh, with a two point linear calibration and is known to be correct. However, you can see from these data that the baseline, in other words, the non-twitching neutral portion of your recording is not uh, at zero continuously. You can see it moves. Here it's slightly above zero, and then towards the end of the experiment it's slightly below zero. And it ranges from about plus 15 to about minus 20 newtons of force. This, of course, is a little bit of a problem when it comes to do the analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this tutorial into two parts. And the first part, I'm just going to deal with very easily how to assess the twitch force for each of these stimulus in order to generate a standard curve of, uh, for instance, force versus the applied current. Although I won't generate the curve itself, I'll just go through the principles of how to acquire these data. So what we've got here is we've got a series of twitches with a series of stimulations. Uh, and what you might think of doing in the first instance, if we just zoom in on one of these twitches, here's the one for 225 milliamps, would be to drag the marker, drop the marker just before the twitch, hold your cursor over the twitch, and notice that the change in Newton force for this twitch was 86.0. If I want to, I can drag this and make a DVM window and you can see that in detail there. You could then repeat this exercise for each of your twitches, dragging the marker to the point just before the twitch and then holding your cursor and you can see that this twitch is 100.1 newtons of force. Of course you can use datapad to store this information as well and if I click on the datapad you'll see I've already set up um, a datapad to record the maximum, minus, minimum, and also the maximum force. And if I was to select the area covered by this track and add it by, to datapad by pressing Command D, my datapad window would now show that my twitch, as I said, was 101 here with the maximum force. And this is in delta Newton, so that's the uh, increase. What I've done though is I've set up channel A to also show maximum minus minimum. So that's one of the equations you can use in the statistics drop down for the column setup, maximum versus minimum. What that is doing it is looking at the data and it is working out where the peak of your height is versus where the trough of the previous data were. And that then works out a change. And if you were to repeat that, for a number of twitches. Let's just do it for this next twitch and then maybe the one after as well. So we'll add that by pressing Control D to the data pad. We'll then move on to the last twitch, highlight it, drop our marker and add that to our data pad. And then we look at our data pad window. We'll see that these numbers correspond fairly well. So you can see for increasing currents, we see an increasing force of twitch. And whether you look at the maximum value in delta newtons compared to where the marker was dropped versus the maximum minus minimum value, which was taken from the peak to the trough, you'll see that the ratio of increase is roughly the same. There is a small variation in this, and this can be explained if I zoom in by the positioning of the marker. You'll see there, there is some noise in this signal. This is some kind of interference caused by the equipment being used or mains interference or an earth loop. And you can see it does really depend on where we drop our little marker as to where in the noise loop it picks up our data. Of course, if you're choosing maximum minus minimum, it'll always take the lowest point in the previous set of data. 
before measuring. So you're going to be estimating the twitch force and as long as you are consistent in where you drop your marker or consistent in the method you use, whether it's the marker drop or maximum minus minimum, you will be consistent in the data you collect. Of course, you could attempt to filter out this noise and I'm going to drop down on the force menu now and choose a digital filter. And if I put in a low pass filter, let's say at 50 hertz, which is the mains interference you'd get with RF frequencies for mains current, and press go, you might notice now if I zoom in that a lot of that noise has been reduced, but you'll still see a cyclic change. You could play with filters and try and eliminate the noise completely, but in doing so, you might actually eliminate some of your signal, and we don't really want to do that. So that covers the basics of how to acquire your data from the uh, trace on the screen, which has a variable baseline, into Datapad in order to then create your standard curve, for instance, in this case of Twitch versus the uh, current applied. So what I'll do is in the next tutorial, as I'll take this one step further, and we'll look at how we can then convert these data into a figure for presentation or reporting.